All right, so we're up here in the attic and we finally have these units up and running. And so Bill's gonna tell us about uh, this cool new heat pump, how it works and everything. Okay, this is the Bosch air handler. So it has a, a coil in here, blower here, supply plenum here, um, filter over here. Uh, so what happens is you turn the heat on, the coil temperature reaches uh, 80, 85 degrees and then it'll turn on the uh, blower motor here and force uh, warm air into the house. The condenser or the outdoor unit is running. It's pulling the outdoor coil is colder than the uh, air temperature, so the heat running across the uh, coil it'll actually pick up heat from the outdoor air all the way down to I think it's uh, five degrees. Cool. So um, yeah, got media filter, whole and, house. And so this guy, this guy is if this is the drain. The drain. So, so condense water, you know, okay. moisture condenses. Condenses and air conditioning because uh, uh, there's moisture in the air. It has, uh, coils lower than the dew point so that the uh, moisture goes in the bottom of the pan here comes out the drain and goes out it dribbles out Santa Ana winds is the, uh, there's, there's no moisture in the air it'll be as dry as a bone so there's only moisture when it's below the dew point and so then this is if, if something if something were to plug up if a bug or something a squirrel somebody screwed up the pipe somewhere the water will back up and then this is a turnoff so we don't right. we don't we don't uh, overflow or whatever yes and it, if this fails it's going to go into the pan mm -hmm. and then this this is a double backup okay it's a double backup and this is the this is the filter uh, honey uh honeywell media filter okay 20 by 25 large surface area uh to capture the particles it's a wide filter four inches so it's and a, that's a hepa or what it would or HEPA. is that just a HEPA yeah, or whatever yeah, okay HEPA, yep yeah HEPA rated filter okay yes. cool and then what's this bad boy this is a uh, liquid line dryer, pulls the moisture uh, out of the refrigerant. If there's moisture or if there's dirt and uh, uh, debris, uh, it protects the uh, compressor out in the, out in the back. Cool. Or actually, actually, the compressor and the, uh, there's an expansion valve uh, that opens up, kind of like injectors on a car here. There's one out in the condenser, so that protects it too. Okay, cool. And so, so this was the old vent because this, this used to be a gas-fired system, and so you can't have exhaust gas is building up in here so this is this is the old vent that we don't need anymore because we're not burning gas yes this is safer uh this is safer system because you don't have uh natural gas burning carbon monoxide or any of that stuff cool so yeah and this is the down wait is this the this is the uh, upstairs. Down, oh, this up, the upstairs uh, oh yeah right yeah upstairs the, the right, okay. <clears throat> yep downstairs and then behind downstairs me. over there same same thing just uh just a slightly different size, but the same principle and everything. So cool. So, so, and what do you like about these uh, heat pumps or what do you not like about the heat uh, pumps? I like them now because they're, they're quiet and they're uh, self uh, regulating. So the colder it is outside, it'll actually pick up speed and uh, uh, keep the BTU, uh, the BTUs constant within the house. Older styles w would not, they would, it would it's they on would, off. They, yeah, Older yeah, on styles off. Like, and as it gets colder outside, they just, they just run at the same speed where this one will race and build heat. Right, so this guy's gonna yeah. this is gonna adapt to what what the demand it needs, whereas the old yes. style was just gas fo foot down to the bottom on the gas pedal or yeah. on the brake pedal, yeah, one or yep, the other. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yep. All right, cool. Yeah. And then overall, you think uh, so? This is a pretty tight space. Is this like would you would you say that our attic is is common for like the SoCal roofs you're in, or is this like a pretty squished one or um, a spacious one? What, what, what would you say? It's getting a pretty common in the newer style houses, twenty years and up. The, the attics are getting smaller because the ceilings are getting higher right because the yeah. old style house didn't have had more regular size rooms so there was more gap between the bottom of the ceiling yes. and the top of the yeah. roof tile yeah yeah, yeah yeah if you lower this two feet then you're, you're good to yeah. go yeah <laughs> <laughs> awesome all right cool well, thanks dude all right okay so that was that was uh inside the house now here's here's some of the units outside the condensers so bill tell us about how these guys work okay this is a bosch condenser it's either a four ton or five ton depending on how you set it up um and it'll actually self-regulate so if it gets uh too cold in the house it's just going to derate to uh, uh four tons it actually actually does it automatically you can do it with dip switches or or it'll do it automatically because it's reading that uh, the temperature of the cold pipe the suction line coming back right so, so, so it's reading the pipe the the air in there yeah. Or, or the liquid. Yeah, uh, it's reading uh, vapor. The vapor, okay. And right, it's right. about fifty-five degrees. Okay. So if it, let's say it started going down like the thirty-five, it's right. gonna, it's going to slow the compressor down because it's too much capacity. So this this is operating with this heat pump. This is operating both in heating and cooling mode. Yes. It's not like an air conditioner, quote unquote. Yeah, right now it's it's in a uh, uh, cooling mode. Mm -hmm. So um, it has uh, the the uh, the. Uh, 
the warm air or the cool air coming across the uh, the warmer coil is, right. and it's pulling out the top. It's taking the heat the heat out of the air. Is, uh, what is, what cool. Is and you were saying that um, one of the, so so one of the things that Bosch has done is they they sort of uh, pioneered or introduced or whatever that this variable speed motor, but then also that they have a lot of their control architecture outside in this yes. unit. So when the system goes bonkers and needs to be fixed uh, service folks can come out here and not have to crawl through the roof as much yes everything's everything's in here so it's reading the suction line the, the liquid line temperatures and, and it's just self-regulating depending on the it's load matching so whatever it is out here cool or in there it's load matching so. And, so, and so we had so we had exist the existing units the smaller the smaller uh three ton three ton yes uh that that guy would just use the existing wire that was already wired in from yes. historically we had to put a larger gauge wire in for this heavier draw unit but um, yeah but yeah so pretty cool and we just we just uh put the pads scooted the pads a little bit kept them a little bit farther away from the uh uh, uh laundry uh, uh blower so we don't we get less uh microplastics all over this thing and and all that kind of good stuff and so, and so you like these units too so you think you think yes, these units they're, are good they're quiet and they load match where a regular system is running 100 percent all the time no matter what and when we were when we were, you were testing them a little bit ago, we had them full bore, full on, and they were, I mean, I don't know exactly, but I would guess they're about half as loud as our former, or probably even less than yeah, that, probably yeah. less than half as noisy, uh, even at full bore. But again, because these guys have variable speed, a lot of times it'll be um, even quieter than that. Yeah, most that of the time it's going to run like this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Only if you come home, turn it on real quick. It'll actually, it's hot in the house, it'll pull out warm air across the evaporator up, uh, upstairs, it'll trigger this for high speed, and then once you, half an hour later, it'll drop down. Cool, yeah, although probably what we do is we turn on the whole house fan for a few minutes, get that yes. get that stuff vacated, and then yeah. kick this guy Yeah, down. you can yeah. do that too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. Sweet, all right, dude, thanks, man. All righty. Okay, so the last bit is gonna be to um, augment our insulation in the house. So this is um, regular uh, fiberglass insulation. Normally you put that in in bats, but this case, in this case, it's gonna go in as, um, as, as loose fill, and this guy's gonna jam this stuff in here, and it's gonna blow out here, and they're gonna blow it into all the nooks and crannies to create a, a complete blanket um, between the rafters and, and all the different uh, uh, spaces in the attic to improve our um, energy, thermal, thermal uh, inertia in the building during winter and in summer and all that kind of good times. Um, what we've done is we've uh, taken existing um, uh, the existing stuff that was here and augmented it. So we overlaid this with a blown um, uh, insulation. This is um, all over the, the attic space, and it's a little lumpy in some places, a little smoother in others. But but over time, it'll probably smooth out. Um, you can see it's you know it's pretty pretty gigantor back there, filling up the volume. And that's going to both keep our wintertime warmth in and also our summertime heat out. And in particular, the summertime heat out is, I'm really looking forward to that because what tends to happen is the heat builds up in this attic. These studs warm up, these studs pull the heat down into the walls of the house and then keep our house warmer than it necessarily needs to be. So that's one thing to deal with that. The other is this whole house fan that's now hooked up. And I like to have it a little bit tighter up. I think I need to get that strap a little bit higher up. But basically, um, the idea here is this looks like uh, a bunch of the same kind of thing as the ducts around. It's actually different. So this is duct work that only goes about 10 feet that way and then connects to a grill on the roof. Um, that's separate from all these, which are for the, the, the HVAC system. And so what this is going to do is um, when uh, we come home and it's, and it's hot inside the house, say after being gone all day and it's cooler outside, crack open some windows, open the garage door, what have you and then uh, turn this on. And this is gonna suck the hot air mass that's inside the house, blow that into the, the attic space, and then it's gonna pull in that cooler air. So very quickly cool the overall um, air mass of the house down. Once that hot air is in the attic, it then goes out the grates. And, and what I've done here is I've, uh, the old or the traditional builders have these very coarse uh, uh, grish, uh, grids on here, mesh on here. And I've replaced that with a now recommended one eighth of an inch uh, mesh size uh, for those of us that live in and around wildfire areas. And so one of the um, uh, 
most common ways that houses catch fire, and especially in wind-driven fire events, is with um, embers that blow a, a good distance and then catch somewhere. So, um, for example, blow into your um, roof fence and get into your attic space and then ignite your house from the, the attic. And so this one eighth, eighth of an inch will allow air to blast out here and allow us to do our environmental controls, but also keep us safer from the uh, uh, potential uh, wildfire risks that are outside. Okay, so um, the, the other thing to say about these whole house fans is some of the lore is that they're really, really loud. And uh, that might have been true, you know, decades ago or, or, or generations ago when we first started using these. But the new generations are, are pretty pretty quiet. And so I'll turn this on in a second here. Now, this is designed to be, this is just an RF uh, remote control um, to control the, the fan here. This is, um, you know, designed to be mounted on a wall somewhere downstairs or whatever. Uh, maybe I'll eventually do that. But for now, you know, it's fine just to have it like this. And so what you have is you have the option to turn it on, turn it off, uh, or turn it on. The default is for a period of time, an hour, two hours, etc. You also can control the fan speed. So I'll just show you what it sounds like. We'll do this guy. Low speed here. So granted, I'm, I'm on low, but but still, I'm right up next to it here in the attic, and it's not very loud. And so um, we've tested it even when we have it on high, and we are, um, you know, you know, downstairs, you, you you pretty much can't hear it. So so a great a great uh, energy efficient way to cool your house down, um, oftentimes uh, uh, in the summertime uh, here in Southern California and other areas uh, like our climate. Um, so that, that's it. So that's our. That's our um, redo of our environmental control system to be more efficient, um, to get off of uh, fossil fuels, get off our natural gas. And, uh, you know, time will tell, but it seems so far like it's going quite well and we're pretty pleased with the system that we have here um, and can't wait to, to see how it performs in the coming months.